What's up guys, Miles here with 9to5Mac, and today we're going to be taking a deeper look at iPadOS 15. We've got the first beta here in my iPad Pro, and it's definitely buggy as to be expected from a first beta, but we're going to dive in and handpick what I believe to be are the top features for the iPad as far as increasing this device's functionality. Let's take a look. Let's start with multitasking. Half the point of having an iPad versus having an iPhone is the larger canvas that should allow you to do more things at once. And that's why iPadOS has a new improved multitasking menu. Now in iPadOS 15, whenever you open an application, you'll see this triple dot menu at the center. And once you click on it, you'll be greeted with three options. You can either enter split view, slide an app over, or enter full screen. So when I click on split view here, it throws the open app over to the side, and you can pick your second application to split the screen with. iPadOS 15 now makes it easier to open a window in the center. You simply have to touch and hold an email message, note, or message conversation to open it in any window centered on the screen. It's pretty perfect for quickly previewing the content without leaving your current view. An example of where this would be really useful is let's say you want to take notes while watching a YouTube video. You can just open a note window over a video that's playing. You can take notes while watching the video. New to iPadOS 15 is Shelf. The new multi-window gives you quick access to all the open windows for a given app. So whether you're in the Apple Notes app or Safari, you'll be greeted with the shelf as soon as you open the application for the first time. And then as soon as you start interacting with it, the shelf will disappear. And it honestly is quite useful for quickly accessing those different windows you've got open. Arguably one of the biggest new updates to iPadOS 15 is widgets, and more specifically, the ability to place widgets anywhere on the home screen. I wish this is something they could have just had with iPadOS 14, but I'm glad we've got it here now. It's so nice to have this large canvas that you can truly do anything with now as far as widgets. I can take any widget here and place it on any corner of the screen and I'll have no problems with that. And another cool feature is that widgets will rotate uh, with the iPad's display when you put it into portrait orientation or landscape orientation, the widgets will rotate accordingly, which I thought was a nice touch. And when going into the widget library here, you can see that we've got a bunch of new widgets with iPadOS 15. The first of which being the Find My widget. You can use this to place on your home screen and keep track of all of your friends, personal items right from the home screen. You've also got the Contacts widget that allows you to stay connected to your friends and family or quickly reference people in your contacts right from the home screen. We've also got a game center widget with two different options here. You can either have a continue playing widget that'll show you recently played games. And you've also got a friends are playing widget that'll show you in various different sizes what friends are playing what games at the moment. And then naturally we've got a mailbox widget which makes perfect sense for use with a display like this. And then as you can see here, we've got an app store widget that will give you the today on the app store page right on your home screen in three different sizes. And now that we've got widgets and especially freeform widget placement on iPadOS 15, I can't wait to see what all the other app developers do as far as creating their own widgets for iPadOS 15. And I overall feel as though widgets are finally where they need to be on iPadOS 15 because they were definitely lacking in the previous version in my opinion. Making its way over from iOS is the app library. I'm not sure why they didn't include the app library on the previous version of iPadOS 14, but we've now got it on the iPad and it automatically organizes your iPad apps into helpful categories like productivity, games, or the intelligent categories like suggestions. And what's unique about the app library on iPadOS as opposed to iOS is that you can access the app library from the dock at any time, no matter where you are, no matter what app you're using. And with this updated app library comes the functionality of being able to hide home screen pages. So I can tap here on these little dots hold, and then I can uncheck certain home screen pages in order to hide them. I'm not getting rid of them completely, just temporarily hiding them. But if I do want to delete them, I just click on that little subtraction button and it'll be gone. The note taking app on iPadOS 15 has been updated with a bunch of useful little features, the first of which being tags. Tags are a fast and flexible way to categorize and organize your notes, and you can add one or more tags by typing or handwriting them directly into the note. So as you can see here, I put in the hashtag film, and then with the tag browser, you can use the tag browser to reference any note that has a certain hashtag in it. So if I wanna find a note with the hashtag film, I just go into the tag browser, click on the hashtag film, and it'll 
show me all the notes using that hashtag. And if you want even more organization with your tag notes, you can use custom smart folders, which allows you to automatically connect notes in one place based on tag. So I click on that menu, hit new smart folder, and I can select which tag I wanna use and then give a name for my folder. With shared notes, you've now got activity view, which allows you to see anything that another person within the note has done. So you click on that profile icon, you click show all activity, and then it'll give you a list showing you everything that's happened within that note, who did it, what time it was done, the date it was done, all the details you should need. And it's a really easy way of keeping track of who does what within a note. You can also now mention people within a note. So you just hit the at symbol, start typing a name, and it'll likely give you a suggestion based on whoever's in that note, like it did here. And when you mention someone within a shared note, they will be notified. And then of course, we've got quick notes. This is new to iPad OS 15, and this allows you to easily create a note no matter what you're doing or what application you're in. As you can see here, I can write in this quick note in any way I want. I get access to all these same pencils and markers and erasers that I do with the normal notes app. And when you're done with the quick note, you can share it via messages or any other application, or you can just save it to your quick notes where you can access it later. Another cool feature is being able to add links within a quick note if you wanna quickly reference them. I just have to hit copy on a link. And then as soon as you do that, a menu should appear at the top saying add link. You just hit that and it'll be there at the bottom of the quick note. And overall, quick notes is very handy. It's one of those great features that you got on devices like the Galaxy Note series of phones, and I'm glad to see it here on the iPad. Just like iOS 15, iPadOS 15 has gotten a huge update for FaceTime, giving a bunch of features, and overall it really seems like Apple's trying to kill off Zoom, Google Hangouts, all these other video chatting applications. And with the M1 iPad Pros having the center stage functionality, it seems like the iPad Pros in particular are gonna be one of the coolest devices to use FaceTime on. One of the biggest new features is the addition of portrait mode to FaceTime. This is something I did not expect to see in this update, but I gotta say it works pretty well. I think it does a pretty good job of handling edge detection, and overall it does look artificial Official, just like the standard portrait mode for iPhone photography does, but it doesn't look bad. For a first beta, I'm pretty impressed with how well it works so far. This FaceTime update also comes with two new audio effects, voice isolation mode and wide spectrum mode. Voice isolation mode is pretty self-explanatory. It essentially cancels out all of the background noise you've got going on to create a much more isolated audio environment. And wide spectrum mode does the complete opposite. Wide spectrum is essentially giving whoever's on the other end everything that's going on around you. If you've got a faucet running or there's a lot more going on out outside, they'll probably be able to hear it if it's close enough. And when calling with different people, they can definitely tell the difference between voice isolation mode and wide spectrum mode when I switch it over, but not so much between voice isolation mode and the standard audio effect mode. But like I said, it kind of depends on what kind of audio environment you're in. But I gotta say, out of all the new FaceTime updates, my new favorite feature is the FaceTime links feature, because this essentially opens up FaceTime to everyone, whether you're on a Windows device or an Android device, all I have to do is create a FaceTime call, give it a name, copy the link, send it to someone, and if you're on an Android phone, like I said, a Windows PC, you can join via the browser, which is really cool. I created a FaceTime call using links and joined it on my Google Pixel 5, running Android 11, and I was able to join and it worked decently well. I'm not able to use all the new features like the screen sharing features and all that good stuff, but overall it works pretty well. And with this update, I can see now that FaceTime is gonna be a lot more important for consumers outside of personal use. And arguably a really slept on feature that Apple didn't advertise that much in the WWC keynote is the ability to zoom on FaceTime calls. I can't count how many times I've wanted to zoom in on something when I'm FaceTiming someone and trying to show them something that's going on outside or in my house or something like that. I've always been wanting to get zoom functionality on FaceTime and I'm glad we've got it. And although I can't demo it for you because this first beta hasn't activated the features, FaceTime's gonna have a bunch of new features for sharing content with your friends and family through what they're calling SharePlay. This will allow you to share your screen with someone you're FaceTiming, watch movies, or listen to music together. And it'll work across multiple devices as well, meaning I can be watching a movie on my Apple TV while FaceTiming someone on my iPad, and I can show you what's happening on the Apple TV through FaceTime, all because of SharePlay. And all these features look really cool. I'm overall just super anxious to test it out whenever that next beta drops. But even now, the fact that FaceTime come as far as being able to have Android users join calls is really awesome. And I'm super happy that we've got all these features on iPad and iOS.
all new to iOS 15 and iPadOS 15 is shared with you. This is a new messages feature that essentially allows you to access things that people sent you via iMessage within the app that's used to view that content, meaning all web links sent to your iMessage will be accessible from the shared with you page on Safari. This also applies to Apple Music, podcasts, and the Photos app. And this is a really convenient way to find stuff that your friend might've sent you a while ago and you forgot what it was, as an example. This feature also allows you to continue the conversation from the shared with you menu, which is pretty handy. And with this also comes the ability to finally pin messages in iMessage, which is super clutch. And I'm glad we finally gotten that functionality. Safari has gotten a massive UI overhaul that's gonna be consistent across all platforms, iOS, iPadOS, and macOS. And this update was done with the purpose of reorganizing the tabs bar to make it more minimal and compact. We firstly got this new streamlined tab bar. It now takes up much less space on the page and it'll adjust to match the color scheme of the website you're on. The tabs themselves have also been redesigned, giving them this floating look and they jump around in size based on whatever tab is currently active. I didn't mind how Safari looked prior to this update, but this redesign is growing on me by the day. And I think this design makes sense from a functional standpoint. There's an updated more menu that'll give you access to privacy reports page translation, and a handful of other functions. The sidebar has visually been updated as well. And when going to that updated sidebar, you can see that we've now got tab groups, which will allow you to save and organize your tabs in whatever way you'd like. So as an example, I'm gonna create a new tab group called Tech, and I can add different sites to my tab groups to easily access them later. As far as other new additions, we've got a customizable start page. So you can go to the bottom of the start page, hit edit, and you can toggle what you want to appear on the start page, as well as being able to change the background image. And this setup will sync across all of your devices, including your iPhone, iPad, and Mac. We've also got voice search functionality that you can now access from the tab bar, as opposed to your keyboard. You can also swipe down to refresh the page, which is definitely something I've been missing. And then probably one of the biggest updates for Safari on iPadOS is the ability to use web extensions. This isn't even a feature that Google Chrome supports on mobile devices, so it's actually a pretty big deal that Safari can do this. But when you think about the fact that all of their products are running on Apple's custom silicon, it makes perfect sense on how they're able to make it work. There's a page on the App Store specifically for accessing Safari extensions, and pretty much all of them are ad blockers right now. But I'm hoping to see this extension library grow as more and more builds of this beta continue to be released. Live text is arguably one of the coolest AI features that's ever come to iOS or iPadOS. This feature allows you to interact with text found in photos, and it doesn't matter what font or size the text is, as long as it's completely visible. And as you can see here, the Photos app can almost completely decipher the words written on this birthday cake. The words were written in cursive, so it didn't completely get it right, but I'm still very impressed by how well this works. And as you can see here, when working with a much more visible font, I can easily identify the text and even hit look up on it to get more information. Another cool feature coming to iOS and iPadOS 15 is Focus. The idea around Focus is that you can create preset alert modes based on whatever you're doing. This could be gaming, working, exercising, or whatever focus you'd like to create. And as opposed to the simple do not disturb that blocks all notifications, this feature will allow you to choose certain people in your contacts who can notify you. You can also choose certain applications to allow notifications from, as well as being able to allow or deny time sensitive notifications. After the focus has been created, you can customize it even further, being able to choose what home screen are active during a focus, as well as being able to toggle sharing your focus status with other applications. Overall, this is a really neat feature for those of us who want a bit more control over how we receive notifications during certain activities. And although I can't demo this feature either, I wanna give a shout out to one of the coolest features announced for iPad and Mac at WWDC, and that's universal control. This will allow a single mouse and keyboard to control your iPad and Mac without any setup required. And not only will you be able to transition your cursor between devices, but you'll be able to copy and paste text or files between your devices, which is really cool. You guys already know we'll have a video showcasing that feature whenever that beta build is released. But that's pretty much it as far as major iPadOS 15 features are concerned. A lot of the other features either aren't activated yet or just have yet to work properly in these betas. But let us know what your favorite iPadOS 15 feature is in the comments below. And let us know in the comments whether you think this update has given the M1 iPad Pros any extra value. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.